Hey guys, today let's talk about pi. You mean that pi? Pizza pie. No, but the but we're gonna use this pi to calculate the circumference and the area of this pi. Pizza pie. Oh, today's pi is. 3.141592678467242829562789 I don't want that pie. I'm out of here. You see, circles are used everywhere. This pizza pie here, this telescope lens, clocks, wheels, and so much more. But if you don't know how to calculate into the circumference of a circle, you might end up having four different sized wheels on your car and will wobble around as you drive. So, let's talk about pi. Pi is a useful constant for figuring out the circumference right here and the area of a circle. Let's see how pi was made. Pi was first made by the Babylonians with an approximate estimate of 3. And then, later, Several different mathematicians such as Archimedes and Zhu Dongzi came in and tried to make pi more and more accurate. And even to this day, we use supercomputers to get even more accurate on the value of pi. Now, let's see in the symbol pi. The symbol pi was first used by William Jones in 1706. He used it because pi from the Greek alphabet corresponds to p in the perimeter of a circle. This symbol was popularized by Leonard Euler in 1737. Now, let's see how Archimedes used the math to figure out pi. So let's go to the board and see how he did it. See you there. Bye. Now. Let's see Archimedes' calculation and the formulas of pi. So what Archimedes thought was that first you take this circle, then you chop it into four pieces, and you spread it out. See here. And then you get the same you do the same thing to another circle and put them together. Then you chop the fourths into finer pieces. Eventually, after an infinite number of steps, you eventually left with a rectangle. And then, when you slice it into two and get a right triangle, the area of that triangle is equal to the area of your original, original circle. Also, this longer side here is also equal to the circumference of the circle. Except there's one problem. You, can, you can't measure it out. So, Archimedes thought of this. You see, at the time, although pi was unknown, you can still measure polygons. So, he got clever and used two polygons. For here, you have two hexagons. One is smaller than the circle and is inside the circle, and the other is bigger than the circle and is also outside of it. For here, for simple math, he made the diameter equal 1. This will make the circumference equal pi, and I'll explain it to you soon. If you do the math, the perimeter of the inner hexagon will equal 3. The perimeter of the outer hexagon will equal 3.46 or 1. And pi is somewhere between 3 and 3.46 and then when you get an even larger number of sides, say 12, then your inner perimeter will be 3.1058, and your outer perimeter will be 3.2154. As you go on, let's get to 96 gone. You're eventually left with pi being between 3.141 and 3.1427. So, and Eventually, as you continue this process, you get today's value of pi, which is 
But obviously, this long, a number this long would be very inconvenient to write. In fact, this is just the first 50. So, what we do is, instead of writing all of this, we instead just take this point out and only read that. Which is why, a lot of you guys know, pi equals 3.14. Now let's solve some word problems with pi. So this is the circumference and the area formula. The circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. Because the diameter of the circle is equal to the radius, or radius equals r, 2 pi r, you might also learn it as, as just pi d. The area of a, of a circle is pi radius squared, pi r squared. Keep in mind that you only square the radius and you don't square the pi. So let's figure out the circumference and the area of this circle right here. So right here, I put five as the radius. So for our case, r equals five. Let's plug it into our equation, two pi r we know that 5 equals r, so the circumference will equal 2 times pi times 5. 2 times 5 is obviously 10, so this will equal 10 pi. Over here, let's assume that pi is just 3.14. Then we're left with 31 point. Now let's find the area of the circle. So you see the r radius is 5, so let's plug it in. The pi r squared, because r equals 5, it'll be pi pi 5 squared, or rather pi times 5 squared. This will equal pi times 25, which then equals 78.5. Now, let's solve a word problem using pi. Well, today is Pi Day, March 14th. Get it? Because March is the third month, 3, 14. So I'm gonna order, I'm gonna have a party, a Pi Day party. And I gotta order some pizzas. So I have two different pizzas here. Extra large, which is 16 inches in diameter, and medium, which is only 12. The extra large costs $22, and the medium costs $15. So for the party, should I order two extra large pizzas, or three medium pizzas? Well, we're not gonna need the circumference formula, but we will need the area formula. Pi, let me, pi r squared. Because diameter is 2 times the radius, the radius of this will be equal to 8 inches. And the radius of this will be equal to 6. So let's plug them into our equation. Pi r squared, where r equals 8, this will give us 64 pi. I'm just going to write it as six, as a number times five he, pi here because I don't want to get too hairy because I just don't want to do the math. Okay, at six, let's also plug into a formula. Pi r squared, if r equals six, then we're left with 
36 pi square inches. But remember, I'm not ordering 1 or 1. That would be quite obvious, I'm just going to order this. But because we're ordering 2 of this and 3 of the smaller one, we're going to have to multiply. If you multiply 64 pi by 2, you get 128 pi. But if you multiply 36 pi by 3, you only get 108. Also, if you do 2 times 22, you will get left with $44 you need to pay. But if you get 3 of the medium pizzas, your bill will be $45. So, ordering 2 extra large pizzas for the party does not only give me more pizza, in terms of area that is, but I also save some money. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your pie. Bye!